are you gonna call your cane? Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> common questions that we get on social media is is Ruby blind? Is Ruby blind? Are you blind? Yeah. Yes. Ruby is blind. Yeah. But there are a lot of misconceptions around the word blind. A couple of years ago, we made a really short video that answers this question, but when I recently watched it, I realized that there wasn't a lot of information in there. So today we are going to get in depth on answering the question, is Ruby blind? But before we dig into that, we wanted to tell you about our amazing sponsor, Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word and entertainment and audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers and celebrity memoirs to self-development and kids offerings. With thousands of titles to choose from, Audible has been an amazing resource for both Ruby and me, especially at this time of being stuck at home. I recently started Molly Burke's book, It's Not What It Looks Like, and I love it. I'm sure you guys know Molly from her popular YouTube channel. Molly shares her experiences of how she went blind as a child and how she learned to love and accept herself. There really wasn't much of a disability community on YouTube at first. Only a handful of creators had disabilities, and that was it. When I began connecting with them, it was amazing to see that we all had a similar mission. This is such an inspiring story of strength and perseverance. You can get one free month of Audible, which includes one free title and two Audible originals. All you have to do to take advantage of this offer is click this link, audible.com slash Angie and Ruby. Or text Angie and Ruby to 500 500. Thanks so much to Audible for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I want to address the word blind. There's a common misconception that the word blind means that a person sees absolutely nothing at all. So when I refer to Ruby as being blind, I get a lot of questions like, can't she see light and colors? Or can she see anything at all? But it's important to understand that the word blind actually refers to a spectrum of vision loss. Most people who are considered blind actually do have some vision, whether it's being able to distinguish between light and dark, being able to see large objects and shapes, or seeing things as a blur. So some people do not see anything at all, but it's actually very rare that a person sees just darkness. Sometimes we use the word vision impairment to talk about blindness, because it seems to be less polarizing. So a person can be blind, but that doesn't mean that they see only black. Where does Ruby fall on this spectrum of blindness? I guess it's kind of hard to know because Ruby can't take a typical vision exam like most people because she doesn't see enough to be able to take the exam. From being around Ruby for the last 15 years, I think she falls somewhere in the middle to the severe end of the spectrum. So Ruby. What? You can see light, right? Yeah. And you can see colors when they're really close to your eyes. <laughs> and Ruby can get around pretty good with her existing vision, especially in situations like where she's at home and in the classroom that she knows so well. There are some days when Ruby's vision seems to be worse than others, and it's usually because she's either tired or cranky. Does that happen when you're cranky? <laughs> when you're tired? <laughs> when she's tired, she seems to bump into stuff more often. And I think that's just like a typical thing just for all of us. You know, when we're tired, we're just not as sharp as we usually are. Another question we get asked a lot is, can Ruby get glasses to correct her vision? And the answer to that is no, and that's because going back to the vision exam, she's not able to take a vision exam to tell us what the correction needs to be 
So therefore there's no way to create a prescription that would help Ruby at this time. Due to Ruby's vision impairment, she can't read typical books. So she is learning how to read and write Braille. Right? Yeah. yeah. For a few years, Ruby wanted nothing to do with Braille. She didn't want to touch it. She didn't want to feel the dots. So we just kind of backed off. She got a new vision teacher who started a new Braille curriculum with Ruby. And it has been amazing. And ever since then, Ruby has been learning two to three words every week. How many words do you know now? Uh, no. I think it's like 30 words now. And we're continuing to work on this curriculum via Google Hangout with her teacher during this quarantine time. And you learned two new words last week, didn't yeah. you? What words did you learn? FaceTime. And? It's and? <laughs> Elsa. Elsa. <laughs> So Ruby gets to pick the words that she wants to learn because it motivates her to be excited to learn the Braille words. And then her vision teacher sprinkles in some other words that she needs to know in order to read complete sentences. And it's been really fun. And I like learning Braille with you too. Sprinkles? Well, <laughs> not the good kind of sprinkles. <laughs> She is also learning how to write Braille using her Perkins Brailler. And this has also been super fun for us to work on together while we're stuck at home. <laughs> yeah. If you guys would like a video completely dedicated to Braille and Ruby's Brailler, let me know in the comments below. Getting around the community has been a challenge for Ruby because she doesn't have enough vision to see the obstacles around her. One technique that we use when we're out in the community is called sighted guide. Now in the past when Ruby was littler, we held hands, but since she's gotten older, she actually prefers to hold my elbow or put her arm through mine. Like, you want to show everybody? We're usually on the other side, right? But this, just like that. Yeah, so she prefers to do that. Of course, we want Ruby to be as independent as possible, so she's been working on using a white cane. She started working on a white cane in elementary school. She would hit an object with the cane and not stop. And the whole point of a white cane is to help someone who is blind to know that there is an obstacle in front of them and to stop or redirect their route. And when Ruby was not stopping, we realized that we needed to take a different course of action to help her understand that when you hit an object with your cane, what do you have to do? Stop. Stop. So her orientation and mobility team introduced something called an alternative mobility device or AMD. What is your device called? Roxy. This is Roxy. <laughs> Ruby's AMD looks like a walker, but it doesn't actually provide any support. The point of this AMD is to help Ruby realize that when she hits an object with it, that she's supposed to stop and redirect her route. Ruby has done so good with Roxy. What are you using instead of Roxy now? A cane. So Ruby, right before school got out for the pandemic, Ruby graduated to her white cane. What are you gonna call your cane? Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> One of the skills that Ruby has been working on with her cane is called diagonal cane technique. It's one of the most basic and early skills that a cane user will learn. And as Ruby gets better with diagonal cane technique, she will start the back and forth motion that you see so often in cane users. So I have total faith that Ruby will be learning advanced cane techniques in the near future. Another way 
that a cane helps a blind person is that it actually identifies to people around that person that they are blind. Another common question that we get is, will Ruby get a guide dog or service dog? And we have actually been on a waiting list for a service dog for over two years now. And we are super excited for the time, hopefully to come soon, where Ruby will get a service dog. Ruby's service dog is not gonna be like a traditional guide dog that will assist her independently in getting around. Ruby's service dog will just be specifically trained to offer her more independence in her mobility and everyday tasks but I will always still be around to direct the dog and assist Ruby in taking care of the dog, right? Yeah. So we promise that we will share updates about Ruby's service dog as soon as we have any to share. And we can't wait. Cross your fingers that it happens soon. Yeah, cross your fingers. <laughs> We are also learning about assistive technology and different tools that can help Ruby as she becomes more independent. So far, she hasn't used a ton of assistive technology like on her iPad, but as we are home, we are exploring more options. Like the other day we used the iNote app, and that is an app that Ruby can use to scan bills and it'll tell her the denomination of the bill. $50, front. <laughs> okay. $1. We also have heard about some other really cool assistive technology apps and we plan to try them out and we'll do a future video on them. Last but not least, I wanted to share some tips for how to act when you encounter a blind person in the community. I follow a lot of blind people on Twitter and I am so appalled by the stories that I hear of how they have been grabbed without consent or pushed around. If you encounter a blind person and you feel like you need to help them, the first thing that you need to do is ask before you touch them. Do not touch anybody, but especially do not touch a blind person without their consent. When you touch or move a blind person, they can become disoriented and they can get injured. And so if you feel like you want to help, just ask that person. And if they say no, accept that they don't need your help and that's awesome. Also, if you see a person with a service dog or a guide dog, do not touch the dog. Do not distract the dog. Do not try to get the dog's attention. Just ignore the dog. I know dogs are cute and we all love dogs and want to touch them, but you have to realize that that dog is doing a very important job. Thank you guys so much Aww. for watching this whole video. If you've made it this far, we wanted to tell you about one of our favorite videos that kind of got stuck in the pandemic craziness and it hasn't been watched very much and it's super fun and it's a peeps video where Ruby and Nana and Papa taste test peeps. So here's a little preview of that video. We would love it if you would head over and check out that video. It'll give you a dose of happiness and silliness that I think we all need right now. We should do silliness. Silliness, <laughs> yes. We all need some silliness right now. It's a berry. Yeah. A berry flavor. It's one of Ruby's favorite flavors. Strawberries? No. Me, me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and we hope you guys stay safe and healthy. Bye! Bye!